The idea was, oh, we have these nuclear bombs. You want to drill for harbors and tunnels? We got your answer, nukes. Are you fucking kidding me? Hey, I'm Chris Reinecker, and welcome to Getting Bombed, the show where I get drunk with smart people and talk about the end of the world. I've gathered some nuclear experts in my friend Jeff's doomsday bunker. Hey, Jeff. As Jeff feeds them drinks. Cheers. <laughs> and I ask them the hard questions. What is a nuclear bomb on the scientific level? Those are live nuclear weapons. Mutually assured destruction. To kill everything. Oh, it's scary shit. Oh. Today, I'm with Paul Carroll, a nuclear expert who has worked in Iran, North Korea, and I'm starting this episode already drinking a bit. How about yourself, Paul? Yeah, I think I need to catch up. Oh, hey, what's up, Jeff? It's like fluoride. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jeff and I met in a bar. Uh, um, and, what, and what's he serving up? Uh, there's a Tennessee mule. Oh, nice. All right. Ooh, this one's strong, Jeff, Jesus. Oh. That is... It's pretty tough. It's That's strong. like I'm, highly enriched. So what's the weirdest place in this nuclear universe that you've been? What's the most like strange, surreal spot? So I'm working for um, the Department of Energy and oddly, not for like the weapons making side, but the cleanup side. And I'm sure at the is. Nevada test site. It's bigger than probably five states in the union. It's, it's miles like and miles and nothing. It's America's Sahara Desert. It's barely a year or two after we stopped testing, right? It was the early 90s and we're driving. What are you wearing in the 90s? What, what do you dress like in the 90s? Well, I, I think I had my Genesis t-shirt on because yeah. it was my first concert ever Hell where yeah. I kissed a girl. And it's like, you know. Hell yeah. And I had a beard, I think. Oh, you had a beard? Yeah. You should have said that. Oh my God, I had a beard. Throw but... a beard on. And the first thing that struck me was there's a lot of holes out here. I, I mean holes. I mean. Like. The craters. Holes? I mean craters. No, huge holes. And I'm trying to remember who was with me. Maybe two other people. Think of like uh, weightlifters on steroids, right? Like you're surrounded by a bunch of the rocks. Yeah, a bunch of Dwayne Johnson. More or less. That's what right. I'm picturing. Right. We go up to this one. They drive us out. Oh, we can show you one crater, like up close and personal. I'm like, okay. And then I looked at the little sign over here. Sedan crater. Also like, you're not gonna fuck with the jacked ass dude, right? You're not gonna go try to fight the rock. Right, right. You know? But Sorry, where, where the rock. I got to the lip of this crater and my first thought was like, wow, 1,280 feet across. Oh. What's a football field? 300 feet, right? It's, yeah, 100 yards. Four times that. Feet. That's a big hole. Yeah, How deep hole. is that hole? Over 300 feet deep. So if you're on the 30th floor, you're 300 feet up. That's how deep it is. And yeah. you're standing on the edge of the Sudan crater. Like when was that detonated? It was July 6, 1962. This was the capstone <laughs> event of, of a series of tests called Project Plowshares. I think it's wow. named in honor of an Old Testament book. It was an Isaiah chapter saying, let's beat our swords into plowshares, our spears into pruning hooks, and study no, war no more. George Orwell was like, yay! You know, like, Maybe originally the idea of the biblical verse is like, stop fighting, start farming? Totally, Okay. right? Cool. So Project Plowshares was a series of, it was like 27 nuclear bombs. The idea was, oh, we have these nuclear bombs. We're using the latest technology to excavate a, a harbor or, or a canal or a railroad line. Like, you want to drill for harbors and tunnels? We got your answer, nukes. Are you fucking kidding me? And the construction industry is just like, shovels are so, out, so, nukes wait, are in. Is, and the nefarious aspect of the Plowshares project was normalize nuclear weapons technology to the population. News so that's help. why you're saying totally. it's Orwellian. Because you're Absolutely. saying that these agents of war 
became a societal positive. We got to sell these bombs as useful. Imagine the channel, right, London to Paris. Yeah. Imagine if that had been dug by nuclear weapons. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not. You just have nuclear radiation. Yeah. So all it's over like your face. any way we can go immediately to like nukes. Yeah. So for example, like Ford. Ford Motor Company, there was a point in time where Ford developed this car called a Nucleon because they, they thought, I think, two things. They would trade on the enthusiasm of the day of nuclear is good. That's a dope name, L Nucleon? Oh, totally. The Nucleon? Hard to say that. This is more like an EDM band. Nu nucle nu nucle Nucleon, that's hard to say fast. Nucleon? So. That's yeah. not, we got it. Dude, this oh, is gonna be got, huge. Got, right? Can make a car out of nukes. Right, but but they actually thought they could, like have a little modular nuclear reactor in the trunk, right? Do you remember the Ford, uh, the Nova? Right? Um, was it the Nova? No, Pinto. I thought, I thought you were gonna say Pinto. Back to the Future. Pinto. I definitely the, remember the Pinto. The, oh, <laughs> right? No, I don't know what that means. The Pinto had a really bad design flaw which when you rear-ended it, even at 10 miles an hour, the whole thing exploded. Really? Yeah, bad. Don't follow a Pinto. I didn't know that. Uh, How does this relate to the Nucleon? If you rear-end a Nucleon? Because it's running on nuclear energy. Yeah, hello. Jesus Christ. Right. I, I hear him coming yeah, from like, you know. He, hey man, you having a the, good time? Thanks, dude. Uh, bottoms yeah. up, I think is what he's saying. Cheers. Yeah. He's like an overgrown minion. Yeah, he's he's like he's kind of like going through a thing. Oh, he's okay. Like, oh, but right. that's why he keeps on going. Like, let's drink. Let's yeah. drink. Oh, let's drink. Okay. It's oh. like, hey, that's not gonna fix your problems, Dad. Um, but so, yeah. So they stopped pl Project Plowshares, and they're like, yeah, that maybe wasn't so, such a good idea. Back to my like personal story. Oh right. The right. Sedan Crater. You're looking over it. How did this change your perspective on things? Got to the lip of this crater, and my first thought was like. Wow, awesome. Like the I don't mean awesome, like awesome. I mean like the the traditional meaning of awesome, which filled with awe. Mm -hmm. And I I looked at the scale of the destruction yeah. of this thing and it and I was like, something is wrong here. I guess for me it was a, it was a little bit of cognitive cognitive dissonance. Hey, you're killing this is said, the premise C, of the show. It's a little show. bit of C D. Something I was already intellectually committed to became far more in my gut, which is what most humans act on. The point is, you play in the sandbox, before you're done, you clean up your shit. And we have not done that. We have not cleaned up our shit. It's with great power comes great responsibility. Totally. That's uh, right? Peter Parker's grandma? Winston Churchill? Well, uh, both. Okay. I mean, Peter Parker was Spider-Man. It's like, hey, wow, I just inherited this amazing skill set. Don't just do your shit and, and walk away. You got to think about, well, what, what, what did my shit leave behind, right? And the secrecy allowed our government to get away with waste contamination. With radioactive waste, we don't know how to clean it up. And it's dangerous for thousands of years. And that's where we are today. It's scary to talk about, and that's partially why we're shielding our feelings yes, with alcohol. exactly. Is that, like, that's the change that we can be. Be the change you want to see in the world. Guys, I'm drunk, and it's the end of the show. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and thanks to Paul Carroll. Uh, what an amazing nuclear expert, and what amazing knowledge I've got to learn from you, and it was so much fun hanging out with you. I'll see you guys next time on Getting Bombed. To hear my entire conversation with Paul Carroll, check out the Getting Bombed podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your premium podcasting content. Learn more about what you can do to prevent nuclear war at beyondthebomb.org. Blow this conversation up so we don't all, you know, get blown up. <laughs>